How's it going everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins and welcome back to another episode of the most rare and valuable Australian coins. Australia shares a symbiotic relationship with Canadian and British coinage and just like many of the holy grail coins that can be found in North America and across the pond, they have quite the selection of rare and extremely valuable coins in the land down under, some of which being modern and some of which being pre-decimalization coinage. In this video, we are going to discuss an extremely legendary Australian crown that only has a few examples known and also break down some of the information and values for this holy grail coin. Before I do get into this, I would really appreciate if you guys would hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also hit that bell notification so you can follow along with my new videos as they are being released. In the past, I have made several videos detailing the rare and valuable coins from Canada, Australia, the United States, New Zealand, Britain, and I'm going to be making plenty more in the future. So stay tuned for those. But what do you say we get into today's video and discuss the 1936 Australian Pattern Crown Coin? Let's get it, guys. The Australian crown was a coin used in Australia before decimalization in the year 1966. It was only made in 1937 and 1938 and was the same size and weight as the British crown. The coin was made of sterling silver and was worth 5 shillings, just like the British crown. Originally the coin was meant to celebrate King Edward VIII's reign, but it was made to celebrate King George VI's reign after Edward abdicated. However, this coin was not popular and production was stopped. In total, only 1,008,000 Australian crowns were made in the year 1937 and 101,600 were made in the year 1938, making the 1938 crown more valuable today. A 1937 crown in very fine condition is worth about $35, while a 1938 crown in very fine condition is worth about $135. Australia made a significant change to its coinage after King George V's death in 1936. They decided to introduce new designs for the reverse of all circulating coins except for the sixpence coin. Originally, the new coins were supposed to coincide with the crowning of King Edward VIII, but Edward's portrait had been appearing on the watermark of Australian notes since the legal tender issues of 1933, while he was still the Prince of Wales. Several countries released issues of King Edward VIII in 1936, but Australia had planned to release the all-new coins in 1937. Reverse patterns dated 1937 were prepared, but work on the obverse ended abruptly on December 11, 1936, when the king abdicated. No official coins bearing the portrait of King Edward VIII were issued in Australia, although an unofficial crown-sized coin was produced especially for collectors. The Australian version of this coin shows Edward VIII on the obverse and a squatting kangaroo on the reverse. The portrait of this unofficial coin shows something of the character of Edward VIII in getting his own way. The king is facing left, breaking from the tradition of each monarch facing a different way. Apparently, Edward felt designs of him facing right were not flattering. This objection was the most probable cause for delays for a number of countries that did not issue coins of his reign. Thomas Humphrey Paget was quickly commissioned to produce the obverse design of Edward's younger brother, who was destined to become King George VI. A number of pattern coins were produced in the year 1937, and a few complete coins showing the new likeness of King George VI. These coins are extremely rare and fetch high prices at auction. The unofficial pattern Edward VIII 1936 crown was produced in two metals, nickel silver and gilded golden bronze. During 1965, unofficial crown size patterns of Edward VIII were offered for sale in the United Kingdom and the United States. The obverse of these patterns bore the effigy of Edward VIII. The motifs were as followed. Australia's was a kangaroo, the United Kingdom's was St. George and a dragon, Ceylon was an elephant, and Bermuda a sailing ship. All these patterns were dated 1936 and had a plain edge. These would appear to be restrikes of the patterns issued soon after the ascension of Edward VIII. Originally, they were struck in very limited numbers, but owing to the popularity of crown size pieces in Australia, it appears that they were race struck in larger numbers. In the year 1996, the Tower Mint in London released a further two unofficial Edward VIII crowns dated 1936. The coins, one struck in copper nickel and the other in gilding, each have a privy mark dated below on the bust of the obverse which reads 20.1.36-11.12.36 representing the short period of the monarch's reign before abdicating. 
Now, what do you say we get into the values for this legendary Australian crown coin? Now, it is not the most valuable of the Australian coins. There are some pennies and half pennies in Australia that can be worth buku insane amounts of money. I've actually made some videos on Australian coins in the past. If you guys would like to find out the values on your Australian, British, Canadian, American coins, then go check out some of my top 10, top five, top 25 lists. I have just about all of the rarest coins included on those, but there are just so many of these holy grail coins that fly under the radar, and I feel like some of them should get some extra attention, just like this pattern coin from 1936, 1937. So in terms of value, some of the recent sales for the 1936 Australian pattern coin, one sold on January 14th, 2021, for $156, this was in the silver composition, which is the more common of all of the different compositions. It was graded PR64, which is a proof grade, and it also had a cameo designation. So that is pretty interesting. That is not a whole lot of money, and the coin does have a proof 64 designation, which for British coins is not the highest grade, but it is still pretty reasonable by Canadian standards, and it also has the cameo designation as well, which would make it slightly more visually appealing to collectors. Now this one is in the silver composition, and it sold for $156. Another one of the silver examples sold in 2015 on August 13th for $515. This was graded by NGC Proof 68. One of the bronze gilded examples sold on January 13th, 2015 for a PCGS Proof 66 example, and this one had a deep cameo. So the bronze gilded are not super valuable as well. That is a pretty high grade, and considering it has the deep cameo attribution, I guess it is not nearly as valuable as the last two that we are gonna cover, which are the gold examples. Now the gold are the rarest, of course, and they can be worth some good, crazy buku money. One of the gold examples of the 1936 Australian crown pattern sold for $3,257 on January 13th in 2015, and that was graded PCGS PR64, and that was with a deep cameo attribution as well. So that is not the highest grade in terms of numismatics, but it does have the deep cameo attribution, which adds a lot of visual appeal to the coin. Now, the highest sold example for the gold 1936 Australian crown sold for $4,000. $353 on January 5th, 2014, and that was graded PCGS, Proof 64, also with a deep cameo. So it seemed like a lot of these 1936 crowns had the cameo attribution. Also keep in mind that the auction prices I am giving you are in US dollars. So your chance of ever coming across one of the gold proofs is pretty much slim to nil, but you never know if you get a collection handed down to you. But you can always keep your eyes out for the silver and bronze gilded examples. They are not super valuable, but you can definitely turn a decent profit on them. They're worth a couple hundred dollars each. So the 1936 Australian pattern crown has an incredibly cool history and definitely some value to go along with it. I would really like to thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please smash that thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you're new and hit that bell notification so you can follow along with my new videos as they are being released. I would also like to announce that I have partnered with Lighthouse Canada. They are one of the largest and most reputable coin supply companies in the world. They have a website with a massive selection and inventory that can cover just about everything in your coin collecting needs. They have microscopes, coin flips, they have solution that can reveal the dates and clean your coins without damaging them. And they also produce some of the best and highest quality coin albums on the market. So if you'd like to shop their amazing selection, then go to Lighthouse Canada ca and you can enter the promo code dane 20 at checkout for 20 percent off of your order i have also partnered with charlton press they produce the absolute best canadian coin catalogs with the most accurate information on canadian coins and numismatics so if you would like to find out the values of your canadian coins then go to charltonpress.com and you can also enter the promo code dane 20 at your checkout for 20 percent off your order so that is lighthousecanada.ca charltonpress.com i'd like to thank you all so much for watching but until the next one everybody peace out and have a good one y'all